Hello everyone. In today's video, we'll be doing a detailed discussion on Bloomberg and Spurge will be sharing his experience. So I'll give a very quick intro of Spurge. He's currently working as a data analyst at Bloomberg London. He also interned at Bloomberg and he completed his bachelor's from DTU and master's from Queen Mary University London. So welcome to the channel Spurge and thanks for taking out time to share your experience. Hey, hi Siddharth, hi. Nice to be here. <laughs> right. So let's jump to our discussion today. And as usual, we'll talk about your experience, projects, preparation and interviews with Bloomberg. And okay. right. so let's move to our first section. So Spash, uh, would you like to elaborate on the data analyst role in Bloomberg and like which team uh, are you working with? And since you also interned with Bloomberg, which team did you intern with? Um, yeah, sure, sure. So uh, Bloomberg, I'll give you an introduction to what Bloomberg is. It's a financial services company that provides financial data to all major portfolio managers, traders, investment bankers, everyone. So that is their role. Uh, data census plays a very important role in their business. Their core primary people are data analysts. There are engineers who build their tech stack and then there are data analysts who are responsible for the data, its quality and analytics on top of that data. So that is where I wanted to go. Uh, I have my master's in big data science. So I wanted to do something in data science. I didn't really want to get into software development. And I also personally liked finance and I wanted to do something that was in the crossroads of finance and tech. So Bloomberg's data analyst roles really attracted me. And uh, as you said that I did an intern there. Um, so that is where I uh, got a taste of what their work was like, what, how much of it involved being involved with the financial world, how much of it was the tech world. Uh, it was a mixture of that. So first, how to get onto that. Uh, their intern and uh, insight week programs they open up around august september or august that's where you can apply for those um, uh, basically they want to see someone who's driven and they want a unique motivation about why you want to go there i will go through the steps of the process later they want to see that you have a good profile and yes uh, te good technical proficiency there helps and when i'm seeing technical proficiency primarily they're looking at um, sql and python uh, right. so any projects that you, you've done in sql or python uh, even if they don't bring, in, bring it up during the interview uh, you you're supposed to bring it up they will give you an opportunity for like there would be a question okay tell us about the time where you used technology to innovatively solve a problem so that provides you a good leeway or section into talking about a project that you've done and if you have worked extensively on a project you can spend the entire interview talking about it because they will ask you leading questions on top of that so that is good uh, anything else you wanted to ask yeah yeah so just a follow-up question so i i mean you've uh, explained the data analyst role in quite detail so uh, like which team are you uh, working with uh, because there must be a lot uh, there must be different teams and different departments and divisions yes yes surely so uh, there are three main departments there are sales and analytics there's global data and then there is engineering so right. i'm within global data and within global data i'm within third party indices so indices are uh, BSC, Sensex, Nifty 50. So those are indices. So I'm responsible for data within indices. There are a lot of global indices. So that's what I'm responsible for. Right. Great. So like you mentioned that the responsibilities of data analyst includes that you have to analyze the data, uh, which will be used further. So like if you could dig uh, deeper into your responsibilities and the kind of projects you get. Okay. So one interesting project I haven't I actually been assigned to it, but that is something I want to work on right. is that uh, they also Bloomberg also generates a lot of news. They're, they're also a media outlet. So uh, they want to integrate their news headlines into say indices. That's my team. So uh, Sensex, if it's 5% up today, why is it up? So they want to use, they're using artificial intelligence. They've got a tech team on that, that want, they want to plug it in here. So the analytics we perform is if we introduce a new feature, how many people are clicking on the news as well as our index function 
or how many graphs are being plotted so you can plot different graphs about different uh, financial metrics so those are the kind of analytics we perform we perform analytics on metadata of usage of our platform okay right right and like as you mentioned to perform these uh, analysis using python and sql majorly I, I, if i'm not wrong yes yes so they also have a few so it's a old company in the 40 years old almost now so they've got some stuff that's done on their proprietary legacy system that's okay. very clunky and you don't want to work on that but they're now moving towards everything being on python or sql so you would be using that right right that was pretty insightful and so you you've already spent time interning with them and now i think you've been working with them for three months so yeah till now how has your experience been with bloomwork so starting at any company that has finance in it you will be scared that it's going to be cutthroat <laughs> and people are going to be competitive and just kick you out not help you uh, it was quite the opposite to that uh, everyone was really collaborative upcoming they were really, if you were new and i'm like introverted so i don't reach out to people in my team so i was just sitting on my first day i was just sitting at my desk not talking to anyone but everyone from the team, they came to me, they introduced themselves and they had a chit chat. Everyone throughout the first week met me, introduced what they were doing, helped me with anything I wanted. So yes, they will help you get familiarized with the system a lot. There, there are lots of trainings that are scheduled and you can take them at your own pace. If you're not comfortable, you can ask them to go over with it again. So yeah, it's very collaborative that way. And uh, the reason why my office is still open during the pandemic is that because Bloomberg places a lot of uh, importance on teamwork and they right. believe that you cannot do teamwork remotely. So they've always kept the office open. So people who want to be in the office and work with each other, they can do that. So that is a culture I like. Right, that's great. And uh, like to emphasize on that point, even I, I don't know why we have this perception, like if you're going into a finance company, there is going to be that cutthroat <laughs> com because I think it's because that image of investment bankers in yes. movies and stuff. So like yeah, yeah. Wolf you, of Wall Street, yeah, that Wolf of, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So even when I was joining Goldman Sachs, I used to think that it is going to be that kind of madness yeah, and yeah. people would, but it's really like people are really good, professional and yes. so sweet. So that's great. Yeah. yeah. Right. So like another point which comes to uh, when you think about a financial company is that uh, you have to work really long hours and there's no work life balance. So is it true for Bloomberg or? so uh i would tell you my working hours that's eight to six and yes that is longer than the nine to five but the reason behind that is we have to provide technical support when the market is open so oh. the markets open at 8 30 and close at five so we are supposed to be there before the market opens and after the market closes that is why we work these hours. okay right right but, but it's still not insane like yeah. Oh, no, no. So uh, unlike what I've experienced in my other internships in India, uh, you're not expected to stay back after six. So th there is rarely any overtime or you're rarely forced to work beyond anything. You're not on call all the time. That's nothing like that. Right, right. That's great. And just one more point. So like uh, you're working in the data analyst role. So uh, and you also did your master's in data science. So yeah. just wanted to ask if it's necessary to have a master's for this role or uh, do you have people who who have joined your team right after their bachelor's uh, so i would say it is not necessary to have a master's uh, around 50 percent of my entire department does not have a master's in there including my team leader so that is definitely not a requirement additionally people believe since it's a very technical role you need to have a computer science degree in it to get here that's also not necessary Again, half of my teammates do not have a computer science background. You, they can. The strangest one that I've had is someone from geography, someone who's done BSc okay. in geography. So, so okay. you can come here if you know Python. Right, right, makes sense. And uh, okay, so th this is probably interesting. So, besides the salary, what other amazing benefits are you getting from Bloomberg? Uh, so uh, if you want to include health insurance and life insurance, all of that is definitely there. Right. Uh, apart from that, you get a cycle to work. So they will give you a cycle if you want <laughs> oh. to cycle to work. Yeah. Uh, then they have, um, so Bloomberg also is big into philanthropy. So because of that, they get free tickets to most of the big museums here in London, uh, opera houses, museums, theaters. So you've got free access to that. Uh, also, uh, I like food. So they've got a good 
entire floor dedicated to the pantry and you got breakfast lunch snacks in the middle desserts if you like that uh, at the at, additionally for covid they're also providing your covid commuter assistance program so basically that's 50 pounds a day uh, for commuting allowance oh i mean these all these benefits look really <laughs> amazing and especially the cycle one like yeah i wish we had that in india <laughs> <laughs> okay so that's great that's uh, that was really insightful i think we're done with this one so we can move on to the next section uh, your master's course was obviously relevant to the job you're doing right now because you did your master's yes. in big data but i mean like in india you might be studying mechanical but then you can sit for a software company and get placed so once it is uh, once it is off campus you can always go and apply in any company there's not a constraint but if uh, we're talking about companies coming to colleges so is is the hiring skill or course specific or anyone can apply in any company so uh, off campus on campus i'll start with that and then i will move on to why because it's a little different in india even i had the shock when i moved here was okay. that you would have companies coming to your campus and within one or two days you would get to know if you have the job that's amazing but here unless you're in oxford or imperial there is not really something called an on campus placement okay. you would have uh, career fairs where hiring managers from all these big companies would be there you could you have an opportunity to network with them and i would say you you should utilize that uh, get to know them reach out to them on linkedin build your network with that and that will help you get a referral or help with the process during recruitment okay. uh, that helps so most uh, jobs are going to be off campus uh then when it comes to your branch specifications uh, no if you have the relevant uh, required skills so if you require python for a role it doesn't matter what you've done your bachelor's in or your masters in you need if, if the role wants sql excel and python and if you've done that even if you studied english literature they will consider you for it after that during the interview process you have to obviously convince them with your projects and other stuff Okay, right. Got it. So it's more uh, close to how companies hire in US than yeah. in India, because in US also yeah. I think it's the same procedure. They have career fairs, and then uh, you can yeah, work yeah. and apply. Great. Yeah, exactly. Great. So uh, my first question is: Are there any GPA constraints for people who are planning to apply? Like, and also if your bachelor's GPA relevant uh, when you're applying? Uh, so my bachelor's GPA. initially was very poor and i only managed to get it to mid offer 7.5 so that is what i will give you uh, it is not relevant unless it's very bad or it's very good okay if it's either of the two extremes the manager during the interview would just ask a passing question okay why did you have that so i used to have my 12th marks on my cv when i've sat for the first round of interviews and they looked at my maths marks and maths physics and they asked me okay you got excellent marks so that helps if you got excellent marks in a particular segment that helps um, another way to, if you've got poor gp another way to mask that is to put relevant modules so since this was a data analyst role i put machine learning artificial intelligence and database management these as modules and i mentioned their marks so that helps uh, overcome anything else you've got right right okay got it so there's no minimum threshold but it's always if you have something good you can put it i like it's a brownie point on your yeah. resume yeah right. yeah and i think same goes for master uh, whatever gpa you scored in masters yeah so uh, for masters again uh, they if you've got modules they, they might focus on the module name but uh, i put my marks 80% they were like okay 80% and they just they move past there is no cut off i've had people with 70% 60% because no one thing in the uh, uk while getting marks for your masters is uh, remember the times when our parents told us during boards that they didn't get 70 so marking scheme is similar to that getting uh, no one gets 100 or no one gets 90 the 80 is pretty much the peak you can push to so uh, even if you have 65 that's not a bad mark so when we are converting from our indian scale to their scale uh, none of our bad marks put them off right right makes sense got it so okay i think we've covered this in quite detail uh, next point was we i wanted to ask about the on campus off campus but i think you've covered that yeah. just one question so like what's the good time to apply so for intern like you were telling this august and september you get openings and for the placement season and all uh, what would be the ideal time to apply 
uh, everything. So what happened? I moved for my master's here in September, and that is exactly when the placement season for uh, joining after your course starts. So right. full time roles, entry level, or even internships, everything is open in September, and it all closes by November, mid November. So okay. if you have got companies in mind like Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, HSBC, anything, tech, role, finance, anyone you want to go there, you need to be applying to them first because they happen on a rolling basis. So if they've got 30 openings and they fill them in the first month, then they're not going to consider your applications after that. So you need to be there first. Okay, right. So like apply ASAP and the yeah. kind of the ideal period is August, September. Types. Yeah, yeah. So are there any specific tips on how to prepare your resume for Bloomberg or like projects you mentioned that uh, it's good to highlight projects in Python and SQL because that's what they're looking for. But any specific tips on how to prepare your resume or what kind of specific projects? So uh, one thing again, we would, I felt was different while moving from India to here was in India, I had one CV that was done for everywhere. Everywhere I applied, I have to use that one CV. So I had to change that approach a bit. I, I met my uh, university's career counselor and they told me that you need to tailor your CV to what uh, the job description says. So use the job description okay. of whatever role you're applying to as a cheat sheet. If they're asking for four things, you've got six talents. So you, you can reduce the emphasis on two that are not essential and improve the space on your CV to the four that are essential. So that would be, since now by this time, we've got a lot of projects. We cannot include all the projects that we've done on our CV. So we need to choose what are the relevant ones, give them a bit more description, uh, what were the deliverables. Basically put them in a way that I did this, that achieved this, that was contributing in this way, basically following this template. Mm -hmm. So that is how you show, you're supposed to mention your uh, contributions on projects or job experience if you have that. And yeah, that would be it. Projects play a very important role. Uh, anything, your marks would not play that, that that much of an emphasis during these interviews. Projects, 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 that's it. Right, right, got it. I, I think that that's a good point for me as well. So because uh, till now I've been maintaining a single resume and CV for every <laughs> opening and profile, I think yeah. I'll look into that as well. Okay, so moving on to the last question of the section. So what kind of preparation would you suggest for getting hired? Like in terms of subjects and topics and difficulty level or, or, or probably what is the absolute bare minimum someone needs to do before appearing for the interview process? Okay, so there are three things that you need to do. One would be your Python proficiency. So again, this is not software developer level of uh, co testing codes that you will be getting, not high level competitive programming codes, they, but they would be simple data manipulation or Panda, using Pandas manipulated data set. That is the kind of code you will expect. Again, when talking about coding rounds, SQL, these are very low level SQL skills, uh, questions just to ensure no one's lying on their CV. So uh, you get done with this, and then you would have an aptitude round. So uh, basically anything like NTSC or low level CAT questions, whatever you've done, uh, you need to do that. I had prepared for GRE. So this was like very easy compared to that level. So nothing tough, but aptitude questions. And right. then third would be since this was a finance company, they every round, I had three or four different interview rounds. And every round they asked me, okay, tell us about a uh, recent market news that interested you. Uh, mm -hmm. and I had to talk about that news and then why was that interesting to me? So you need to really know something interesting in the market. And if you lie, because they will ask you follow up questions. Okay. If you say that, okay, you read a headline and you mentioned that, and then they will ask you, okay, why was this headline interesting to you? And you don't know anything else, then you will get caught up. So talk about what, you know, it's okay to say that, okay, I don't know beyond this. I knew this much that that's also a proper answer. Right. Right. Makes sense. So. Like thing, uh, I think to summarize on the tech part, it is mostly Python SQL, but then you need to be well versed with the actual core of the job. So you need to be well versed yeah. with the what's going in, uh, what's going on in the financial markets and everything, and not lie and don't pretend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's never, never, never. <laughs> right, great. So moving on to the last section of our discussion, like, uh, what would you like to summarize your whole hiring process once? Oh, okay. Yeah. I had a very intensive hiring process, so I can go through the entire thing. So when, when you first apply, uh, you get a link to a test uh, that would contain your basic SQL MCQs and Python right. MCQ and 
one python coding round uh, after that you get an aptitude test you finish that once you get clear the basic cutoff for the mcq test that's pretty easy to get you will get a video interview so that okay. is you will not be interviewing with a person uh, you will have 10 questions you will get 2 minutes to prepare before every question and then 2 minutes to answer for that question so okay. uh, tip tip for preparing for these is that uh, they haven't changed a lot in years so you can simply go to glassdoor whatever your role is so this is applicable for hsbc jp morgan uh, bloomberg and most companies hiring in the uk big banks their interview questions that are on glassdoor about introduce yourself recent market news anything specific to your role they are that is what is going to be asked you will have to look at a camera and answer so sometimes these are automatically evaluated which are the worst mm. but sometimes hr will look at your video and then pass you on to the next round okay, uh, okay right. after this recorded video interview round you go on to your uh, team leaders interview so that would be the team with which i would be working during my internship they will interview you and they would ask why bloomberg why this role in specific what about bloomberg attracts me that these all should be something unique nothing memorized or nothing uh, generic try to find something unique in their about section page or even their wikipedia page something that you like so i told them that i like their founder so they talked to me about that okay uh, so just be more personal with your question with your answers so you will leave a mark on your interview and then they will ask you these would be behavioral questions then they would ask you about tell us about the time where uh, you were working with the team and how did you cope with that tell us about a time where you encountered failure and what did you do to overcome that tell us about a time so they would be leading in this way tell us about the time and the skill they want to look for uh, so th- those are the format of the question right. and after that and then finally while closing this interview they would ask you okay do you have any questions for us and they would if the interview is for an hour they would leave 20 to 15 minutes for that section so in, in during my initial interviews i was never prepared to ask them good genuine questions afterwards i started asking them questions like okay what was a question uh, what was one skill that you required when you started out in this role or if someone was in there if my hiring manager was in that role for say 10 years i would ask them okay why have you remained at the company for 10 years so you need good insightful questions to take up that 20 minute time of your interview so you can ask him two maybe three questions if you're asking them longer questions if you're asking them shorter questions it will take you four questions so uh, there's that so after these first three rounds that would be uh, my test then my video interview and then my team leader interview i had my internship after the internship they asked me if i was still interested in the role i said yes i was and they asked me to uh, okay they said okay i had an assessment day so my assessment day had another aptitude test okay. similar to previous one it had a process reengineering task which would essentially be they would explain a business process and there would be two or three bottlenecks in that business process and they would ask you to identify the bus- uh, bottlenecks and then provide three solutions and okay. don't worry about identifying the bottlenecks they are very obvious somewhere the rate would drop down significantly so you would identify that it it is a 15 minute test so don't stress out about that um, if you are coming from an engineering background you would know how to identify the bottleneck and any generic solution you can provide and then i had two more rounds of interviews one was with the team leaders again these were the same people who interviewed me for my uh, internship that was the team i joined after successful uh, process and then there would be a manager level interview so this manager level interview is the person who is above your team lead and that is the final interview both these final two interviews were an hour long so team leader interview happens on your assessment day so on your assessment day you have your test process reengineering task and team leader interview and within an hour they will tell you if you are having your manager interview or not and then a week later you will have your manager interview and that's the entire process okay okay uh, so i mean this process is quite different from what we generally have for software it's quite peculiar yeah. so uh, <laughs> one one resource which you mentioned was glassdoor is a good uh, yeah. resource to look up for questions are, are there any other resources that you use for your interview process uh i i would say glassdoor for manager level interviews for tech my uh, interviews you i think so you've got better resources on your channel for that and definitely stick to those but uh if you're talking about projects once you get to a certain level of experience they are not going to be testing you about the uh, technical questions 
per se mm. uh, python uh, constructors what not they will not do that data structures they are going to test you about what insight you gained with your project what you did on your project so be well versed with any technology that you've used or any library that you've used in your projects so that one would be preparing that way and then for um, any hr based question basically i felt that i needed to prepare more for those so for those okay. glass door was my place to right makes sense uh, that was really great i mean that that's pretty much everything i wanted to ask i guess uh, so swash i guess we've covered pretty much everything in detail and that's all from my side so would you like to add anything from your side i think so i forgot to mention another my uh, responsibility of, of my role at bloomberg so we also have uh, client facing uh, roles a uh, client facing uh, segment during our day so one hour during the day we would be spending answering questions from portfolio managers so we've built our bloomberg terminal that's an entire system that those finance managers used to look at financial data so often times there is a lot of issues with the data there or they cannot plot something or they want explanation with how a particular function works so they will reach out to us and we have to explain it to them so right now i am not doing that because i am not myself well versed within the role to explain to other people but once okay. you get well versed enough you would have that aspect of the job as well oh that that sounds really great i mean uh, we we have it in our companies also but it's mostly leads yeah. and product managers who are doing it but yeah that's great just yes. one more thing final thing would be uh since i'm working in the uk and a lot of people in india feel that uh, it is very difficult to get a worker visa or skilled worker visa to come and work in the us or the uk especially mm-hmm. that we've heard that getting an h1b visa is next to impossible if you're applying from india that would not be the case for uk they've recently when i came for my masters they changed their uh, immigration laws and right now anyone from european union who wants to work in the uk also requires a skilled worker visa so we indians are at par with everyone else who is outside the uk and okay. they are issuing a lot of skilled worker visas every company has a lot of openings and due to brexit there are a lot of shortages in software developing developer roles so if you just open linkedin and you've got uh, any any big company that's amazon for say uh it has got opening for software developers you apply for that you will be considered and it is very easy to get a workers visa skilled worker visa so don't let that hold you back i have people at bloomberg who applied from india within a month they are working here now so don't let uh, immigration hold you back if the you're you're worried about that right right that's really great to hear i so okay i think we covered pretty much everything and i think we can end the video here right Yeah, sure, sure. Sure. Thanks a lot Spurge for sharing all the information and thank you everyone for watching. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>